Back to the 2018 Alchemist Cup here in Penang, Malaysia. I have Jason Katz-Brown with me. Jesse Matthews provides some more coverage live from Malaysia. We also have a special guest commentator. Special guest commentator. Tell us about the special guest commentator, Jason Katz-Brown. Live from India, it's Akshay. How exciting is that? Akshay Bandakar, who won the uh, WESPA Championship last year in dramatic fashion. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, thank you for joining great. us, Akshay. Hey, thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Okay, who do you think will win between this upcoming matchup of Austin Shin versus David Elder? Um, look, I, I just looked at the standings and they're right next to each other, so it's, it's <laughs> definitely going to be a close one. I think um, Austin has a reputation for playing aggressively um, in a wide open games. Um, David's probably more strategic, more defensive, um, but I think it's going to be it's going to be really close. Mm-hmm. I hope Eldar starts smiling at some point because uh, he may be unwell. That could be a disadvantage. <laughs> but we're sending him best wishes for his health. Yeah, the, the thing with these tournaments um, is that you're not just being challenged mentally all the time. It's just so grueling physically as well. So David Eldar is shaking up the bag. I'm about to draw the first set of tiles for this matchup. Hello Aditya, welcome to the chat stream. Not sure if you can see the, uh, the chat comments uh, actually, but Aditya says hello to you as well. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Elder has caught an E R R E R R. I guess. Caught is clear. Seems fairly straightforward to get rid of cat. And we'll see if we can get uh, Kumar to move the name tag slightly, just so the player's actual racks are more visible. Tracks are on the move. How's uh? Are these two of the top teams still? Should we check in on the standings? Uh, team Rest of the World is on top of the standings, I believe, if I recall correctly. Um, I'm not sure where Australia is, but they were starting to mount a comeback. So yeah, first we still have Rest of the World, and then second is Nigeria, third is Australia. Fourth is United States. Oh, United States plummeting. They had a very rough morning. They did, actually. Uh, Team USA, they lost uh, three matches in a row. So they have been at 16 wins mm. uh, for quite a while. And three rounds ago, that was outstanding. And now mm. it's still good, but uh, unfortunately, a little bit off the pace. And the Dream Team has slowly risen from the dead. The Dream Team of Ed Oculus, Numin Fernando, David Eldar, Andrew Fisher, Chris May. In third place. Yeah, Team Australia kind of had their uh, rough patch a little earlier on. It seems to have uh, gotten over it nicely since then. Yep. Uh, Team USA seems to have had that day today, and hopefully they can shake that off and get right back into the fine form they've been in for pretty much the rest of the tournament. Yeah. And Team Rest of the World is in first place is Adam Logan, Louis Mackey, Austin Shin, Esther Perrins, Teresa Brisson. It's like the unlikely top team. It was more like an unlikely geographically <laughs> separated team, but likely that they do well because they're all very strong. We've got a heart yes, for Austin. It looks like Void is the right play. I would agree with Void, yes. certainly. Looks pretty good to me. There are too many front hooks and, and the leaves not great, but yeah, it, it is the right play. Yep. And Jason, that'll actually be a vertical for Cat. Oh my gosh, this is a vertical play. 
here. What do you think about, about this position, Akshay? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is probably Vertu. Mm -hmm. You think KER. Um, yeah, I, I can't see anything that, that's better than that, to be honest. Yeah, I guess the other op option in the sim is Turk, T U R K, making Tad and Ut. Seems about equivalent. They score the same and. Be ever too is. I would I would like that too. Jackson Smiley's returned back to the chat. Hello, he says David looks like a hot mess. And yeah, we, uh, we covered that earlier. I actually spoke to Dave out in the uh, hallway after lunch, and he wasn't feeling well. I was hoping to get a professional opinion from someone who is. Uh, Medically inclined, <laughs> since he had a bit of a tinnitus in one of his ears mm. and felt a bit dizzy, vertigo. So, yeah, he's not feeling well at all. Mm. Was hoping to maybe not be on the board, but I'm guessing Michael said to play anyway because he was going to play either way. So, mm. I like PTUI here through the T of Vertu. Hanging on to IORT. Oh, oh, t oh, oh, PTUI. Hmm. Yeah, it seems well, that's, solid. Yeah, he was better. Oh, he <laughs> doesn't play. Um. You can play the same letters with just pu, pu and pad and it. And the yep. sim also likes various pateries. I don't know, they all seem fine, eh? Like there's... There's not a whole lot of like board geometry considerations you have because... Budak mentions that this is a 2006 World Youth Scrabble Championship replay. Yes, that is correct. Mm. That was one of the primary criteria for picking this matchup, not to mention they're both strong players, of course. So, yeah, it was a pretty simple pick for us relatively when we considered the options for this round. At the end of the day, Austin has opted for a shorter play, going with PIU. Nice. <coughs> yeah, I think that's Excuse a, me. a good play. I feel like this game needs some pump up music. Sorry? This game needs some pump up music. It does. <laughs> I think they should go down to the uh, the gym here at our hotel <laughs> at about seven thirty in the morning because they're playing like club music or something I hear if I were raving. Can you sing us some? Oh, it's nothing song. <laughs> it's uh it's just uh like trans techno, uh house music, all sorts of things like that, and they're playing it at like 7.30 a.m. Yes. <laughs> so it's good for a workout. 
uh, they did not have music that energizing and <laughs> pump you up uh, for the pool when I use the pool or something. <laughs> but the gym, you'll definitely get a, uh, a a solid vibe if you want to get pumped up before starting the day. <laughs> nice. Did we lose Akshay? I think we did. That's a good question. Kumar, can you check to make sure we're still connected with Akshay, please? Can you check to make sure we're still connected with Akshay, please? Sorry? Akshay. Yeah. Not connected. Not connected. Cool. Austin's played... Our elder has played Keith, which uh, is seeming yeah, best. Okay. Yeah, I guess Keep is probably best because uh, really the only other great alternatives. Well, like uh, Fike is another good consideration, making Vertu the E hook, but that gives up quite a bit on the triple score column. And then I got from to be defensive, just like Keith was foe up on top of Vertu. FOE leaving the IKR. Doesn't give anything back. and. Yeah, I care. It's quite nice, I believe. Akshay's back. Hey. Hey. You have returned. We missed you in your absence. Akshay, what is your favorite pump up music? I listen to a lot of um, metal, actually. Um, so that, that relaxes me, it pumps me up. Hmm. So, Excellent. did you say it relaxes? Maybe you I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never really had a genre of music that I listen to that both pumps me up and relaxes <laughs> me. Usually, it's one or the other. <laughs> Here. Yeah, there's uh, another place that you can play those same letters, ALO, for even more points. If you would like to, but Cola still might be best because it's a little bit more, doesn't give them as much back as this other play. That would be Ovoidal through Void. But I think yeah, Cola is winning the sim because it's Ovoidal gives up a big trip forward score spot. Ooh, this is a very interesting position. Because some other fishes are pretty attractive. For example, if Eldar puts the E onto Virtue, he both improves his leave to something that's a good six letter stem, plus opens a really nice triple word score line. And then we'll just get uh, Kumar to check on the uh, name tags next to the racks in the shot. I think the name tags are switched, but everything else should be correct. I think hooking the E on, on Virtue is um, it's just super aggressive. Um, David might not play it given the way Austin looks like he's been pushing. Mm -hmm. Just because there's three S's on Zane, you mean, and you might have an S also? I'm, I'm good, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the other place to put the E would be let 
Ja, ja, toll ist dann. That's good. So David's played the E. Just to clarify for anyone watching, that is not Austin Shin's rack. That was David Eldar's rack. Now we're correct with the name tags on each side. David Elder has Ronnie's on his rack. Mm -hmm. Austin might block that string A G and D yeah. I D. Yeah. Skeef is good. Oh, right. There's also a spot now with uh, Agar for Ronnie's. A little bit safer. Yeah, so it's going to go on the bottom. Yeah, but. Fairly wide margin, Quackle prefers AG to AGA. Um. Yeah, I find uh, I find Aga to be a, interesting, given that an E has just been fished off. Yeah. Aga, I would maybe do in other situations potentially, but especially with the inference that you're sitting on a pretty nice rack over there, and yeah. The places to score with a set of seven tiles that are one pointers is limited until you do something like that. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure I agree with uh, adding the A, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. So it looks like none of Austin's eights can. Mm. It was prescient for Eldar not to play Ronnie's in Skeef because where he played Ronnie's was blocked. Austin's bingo. Yeah. Austin is shaking his head and muttering. Oh no. <laughs> Chris Hawkins says, hello, Jesse and Jason Katz-Brown. Hello back to you. We also have another uh, commentator with us uh, for this run. We have Akshay Bandarkar joining us uh, on a call as a third commentator. What could be better? Chris is pleased to report, as he mentioned yesterday, he has kept the wife happy by skipping the first five <laughs> games, and now all of his obligations, familial and work-wise, are finished, for he is uh, watching for the rest of the day. <laughs> that, that's some serious dedication, like I said yesterday, sir. Welcome back. Excellent. Hmm. Austin's done by a lot, and, uh, and there's definitely no places... There's a lot of places for sevens, not for eights. I guess there's a still an X and a Z and a J, so that's promising, but he could be in trouble if he doesn't if he doesn't engage some scoring never stops soon. <laughs> I like Mick underneath of uh, Ronnie's just because of mm -hmm. how much it opens things up, especially he's holding an E, there's lots mm -hmm. to draw, um, placing it on the bottom opens up a lane below, and of course mice on the right, so a little more partial to it in the bottom, and that's what he's gone okay. for, but I think Quackle is showing it on top as simming very closely as well. Yeah.
David has Zylan for Oof. 70. Okay, that's a large score right there. Here it comes. I would be remiss to not point out it is Austin Shin's birthday today. Oh, that's right. So happy birthday to Austin. Austin Shin's birthday. I asked him what he wanted for his birthday. He said he just wanted to win games. He just wanted wins for his birthday, <laughs> indeed. Oh yeah, he's got Thawier lined up on his rack, and that's going to score decently for him. Only done by forty six. Yeah, the shape of this board is quite interesting at the moment. When I'm looking at the ways it can develop, there's so much you can still do with it. Like, got a couple of T's left for trait plays, for example, as possible bonuses later on. Mm. And Underneath of Xylan, of course, there's the S as a hook, and yeah, there's still lots yeah. of interesting ways to... That E of Thawier is very juicy. Mm -hmm. But also the bag itself is full of bingo letters. With so many ugly letters already played. Still got the J and the Z as cash cows that can be used on this board. And J currently sitting on Austin's rack. There are a lot of options here for, for David, I think. Yeah. Um, what would you play? Maybe J-O and Emo. Um, oh, really? Or J-E-U and X-U. Yeah, that's, yeah, that seems the most straightforward. I would favor Je, J-E-U, a little bit more, I think, if I had to pick between those. For some reason, Quackle really doesn't like J-E-U. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. It looks, okay. it, it looks it fine. Peter Armstrong also suggests a play that we are seeing in the Quackle list as well. He's suggesting Juco with Ox mm -hmm. to score a decent amount, and that's certainly a nicely balanced play. There it is, so right up there with Jure. And Out Jet is an option that hadn't been discussed yet. That one is up there as well. Yeah, Juco is interesting. Like it puts the U in a very dangerous spot, but not really because the letters and there's not much in the bag that can hurt you there. Especially when there's such a juicy spot like on the other side of the board on the triple word score. And then it, it keeps your O for using the ox ox spot litter. And you gotta think that the reason Outjet is performing so well is it turns over m more tiles to get the three S's, two blanks, the Z. Um, 
Yeah, and there were people uh, asking a little bit earlier about, uh, or talking more about turnover, you know, mm -hmm. as, as far as a strategy. And I think turnover in a modified fashion can apply to going for blanks, for example, but not turnover in general. I think it's very situationally dependent. You know, there's there was the previous school of thought that just turnover in general was good to try and get good tiles, but uh, I think turnover in the context of chasing blanks in certain contexts is helpful. Yeah, Juco here is a solid option right up there near the top. And the chat mentions that that blocks Austin's BD, which would have been very big. And it's clever to block that while still keeping his, his L hook there. still plays along the bottom, but I'm not sure I would uh, chase that one there. Looking at things like Deeb alongside Thawyer, I think that's uh, something Austin is potentially considering. I believe is, uh, is a little bit to be desired, though. Yeah. E-I-D-E -E in, in the same spot, um, next, next to T-H-A-W, probably leaves a better lead. ID is a uh, yeah definitely a little bit more balanced. I would agree. Winning the the sim win percentage wise is I D E E making E T and E H. So going along with so, Akshay's suggestion, definitely. Yeah. Good call there, sir. That's a great idea. David Eldar has been rewarded for Juco, says Aditya in the chat, because as Peter Armstrong says, he has Prestos for a lot of points, and that's going to go unblocked. And he's just going to go for posters. Score a fair bit. And that's all the GGTY when there's uh, two blanks on team. And he has a chance of drawing at least one, picking seven. Ah, uh, yes, Peter, that's right. Prestos could have played alongside Thaw here as well, but. Hmm. So Austin needs an R for eyeliner. I can't remember. Does guy liner work now? Yeah, that's good. I couldn't remember if that got added. Yeah, nice. Uh, um, guy liner is like eyeliner for men. Whoa, and it's just like coincidence that guy liner is also a word. Guyline, uh, I don't know if that's related to that. I think, I think that, it's not. That's amazing. I think that's just something else that was in the dictionary. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Guyliner, I am almost 100% certain is eyeliner for men. Nice. It's cool that Ely plays in two different spots. <laughs> These players are both so unhappy. <laughs> They're really bringing the energy level down. Well, Austin's unhappy for, you know, valid reasons. <laughs> He's yeah. definitely not winning this one. And I mean, David's, David's probably also still feeling like crap. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and the right side of the board's getting blocked. It's gotten blocked pretty quickly. Um, it's Austin, keep it as open as possible and try and score because I think David's going to maybe play something like Dwong, which kills the bottom row, the bottom half of the board as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nice thing with Dwong is besides taking out uh, well, a fairly unlikely uh, spot for, say, ON words on top of posters, it also removes the lane uh, 
uh, with rate, anything like starting with a T, for example. So mm -hmm. that does accomplish a few things and scores at the same time. So it's a nice play. So Kumar on the definition says a guy line is a wire used to support a radio tower, but otherwise guy liner, as has been mentioned in the chat and by us before, is eyeliner worn by a guy. It is true. I may or may not have worn guy liner at some point. <laughs> I would hope you have. <laughs> And again, just to clarify, uh, that rack with Duam and I, that one does belong to David Eldar, not to Austin Chin. Sorry, guys, I think uh, with this uh, particular camera angle, the name tags aren't changing, so I'll pass that on to Kumar. can play whatever he wants because there's really no way he can lose. And there's only really spot for one bingo. And also we basically need three bingos to catch up. Looks like he's going for Wade to score a fair bit. That'll leave Benison still open on the bottom for Austin to play. He also has a few choices with the A now. Um, Bessonian or Bessonian. Hmm. Nice. Also, pin bone. Yeah, pin, pin bone's a great option because he still keeps um, the other side of the board open. And from his perspective, there's another blank that's unseen, and he needs to bingo twice. If, um, he needs to have a re realistic chance. Mm. And with uh, David Elder's rack, he has rhodium on the bottom if that spot's not used. Things of its ilk. Eldor also has plenty of scoring plays in the upper left, overlapping DM, like Ohm. That would be 39. There goes Benison. mentioned by Jason, plays like Ohm and Odd Hit and Mech will score a fair bit.
we're waiting for David Eldar to make a choice here. Uh, Akshay, what are your plans for uh, Scrabble tournaments next year? Any big ones you've committed to or you're on the fence about? or What are you uh, pondering for the next year of play? I'm actually thinking about um, King's Cup in, in Thailand. Uh, okay. That's a great tournament. Um, uh, I played that a couple of years ago. It's a lot of fun. Um, and of course, the, the Westpac in, in Goa. Um, so those, those are the two that I'm hoping to do. Um, I think anything beyond that is uh, a, a little difficult for me, given my commitments. But um, yeah, those are the two that I really want to do. Do you have any stories from King's Cup? Uh, it's just... Um, I had I had some great games last time um, against um, HI, although in hindsight it, I don't know, it wasn't it was it was a time before um, what what he was doing came came to life and um, hmm. that was an exciting game. Um, It's it's just it's just really good tournament in terms of yeah. the um, quality. Uh, you get to see a lot of the emerging Thai players, and yeah. um, just the fact that it's, it's on such a large scale. Yeah, everybody should go play Camp Cup. It's the best, second only to Michael Tang's event. And it's uh, interesting. Actually, his pick for the two events for next year are the two that, in an ideal world, I would love to play in as well. Mm as far as outside of North America. So fingers crossed for both of us, good sir, that we are able to make it happen. <laughs> yep. Well, I think I'm going to have to put in some serious study so I can try and compete with the likes of you, given your titleship. Mm -hmm. There goes Ohm to score a fair bit for David Eldar. Michael suggested options uh, such as just O at 11J. And also Muir at 15A in the bottom left. A couple of very different choices. Yeah. Austin could play Zoya here. Yeah, Zoya is yeah. going to score a fair bit there, yeah. But he might want to. There's only four vowels left. He might want to play DZO, DZOS. Yeah, because S doesn't seem super valuable on the board at this point in time, so. Might as well score. Chris May! We have Chris May in studio wow. with us okay. now. My uh, former co commentator from the last iteration of this event coming to join us again. Have a seat, my friend. Actually, is on the line. Actually, is on the line. Actually, is joining us remotely as well. So. Hey, Akshay. Chris, welcome back. Thank you very much. What's happening here? That's oh. a nice, uh, looking like a win for David Eldar here. Okay. Good for you, good for your team. Yeah, very good for the team. How about your game? Uh, I had a 300 point win just then. Oh. Oh. Who are you playing? Uh, Teresa, poor Teresa, yeah. Mm. She was never in it. I had a dream run, which is it's nice to get one occasionally after the 2-9 the start, which really threw me this tournament. The dream not so run, oh. the dream face plant. It was pretty rough, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it so looks like uh, Team Australia's rallied back. We were looking, and after it's been a, tough a good start, morning for us, back. yeah. Um, and Edward has lost to Adam this round, though, so we won all of the completed games. I think we look good to take the round. 
front. I think Noyan's yeah. ahead of Lewis. I'm not sure what Andrew's doing against Esther. So yeah, it seems like the team standings are kind of moving around a bit, which is nice. It's mm. a good testament to the format of the tournament, I think. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. interesting for a while there with uh, Team USA up by a couple of games on the field, but now mm. they've lost a few in a row, mm -hmm. so it's uh, almost anyone's uh, tournament again. Yeah. Has, Aldo, has, has Austin played G He's setting, setting up his Z? He's setting up a Z play. Interesting. He's left a doze on his rack, which would score a ton if it was untouched. Well, he needs an E. He does have one. Oh, he drew an E? Oh, wow. Yeah, but I think David's lined up URB. That just kills that spot. Yeah, I think Dave will <laughs> probably put Pad to that plan. It's a good idea from Austin, though, isn't it? It's very creative, certainly. Yeah, yeah nice play. You gotta do something when you're 120 down. <laughs> you basically have to hope for a, a glitch <laughs> in the matrix of thinking. <laughs> Quite right. And the nice thing anyway is so uh, even if it is blocked with something like herb, uh, you can still play G's and so where's I to score some, not as much as you would have, but you can certainly cash in on it to mm. get a decent score. Mm -hmm. The deck's playing with five in the bag, is that correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. And if you're Dave and you're looking at the uh, um, worst case scenarios as far as what's going to score, you can assume that uh, two or three of those very few vowels are sitting on his opposition's rack. Correct. So part of what makes that a good play from Austin is that uh, blocking is not completely straightforward. It's still very possible to block, but it'll be tough for Elmer to draw some vowels here. Herb is fine. Nice. Uh, Looks look. like a good play. Takes care of the principal threat. So who have we got uh, kibitzing on the chat? On the chat, right. let's see. Um, there's Peter Armstrong watching North America. Aditya Yungar is watching. Chris Hawkins is watching from the United Kingdom. And Wolfram Ho is watching as well. Very good. Most of North Hello, America everyone. has gone to sleep. Yeah, oh. We're having the changing of the guard okay. usually about this time of day. The North American contingent sleeps <laughs> and the European <laughs> contingent wakes up. Yeah. It's been good. We, uh, before you came in, <laughs> there was a rack that was uh, just missing an R for eyeliner. We were talking about guy liner and <laughs> Jason Katz um, wasn't aware. <laughs> of guy liner? The no. substance or the word? Both. <laughs> <laughs> That was a fun little fun discussion. Oh, DL Saldana is Whoa. on the chat. Oh, hi, DL. Whoa. I actually was just with DL and her husband. I got to visit them uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Not even that. Shared well, some drinks. Yeah. Had a fun little time catching up. You must be the best connected men in Scrabble these days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of them, By some thanks way. to my job. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to see you in Sydney? Um, Sydney, I am hoping in the next month or two that oh, I can make a trade. Fantastic. And I know that you're there now, so I, am there, I will let you know if I'm coming to Sydney. There's a sofa bed for you yes. any time. Well, if I'm yeah. there for work, I do have a hotel, oh. you know, as much as I'd love a bed. But mm -hmm. if I'm traveling for uh, personal reasons and not for work, <laughs> yes, I will take you up on that, certainly. Chris May is moving into a new flat. Oh, are you? Um, yeah. Which part of town? Uh, Surrey Hills. Very good. I'm roughly familiar with where that is. Oh, this rack is gritty! <laughs> is anybody familiar with gritty? <laughs> Gritty's the new mascot of the Philadelphia Flyers national hockey <laughs> team. Oh, what are you oh that's about? right. He's uh, talking hockey. That's a okay. language that's uh, not familiar to Australia. Oh, gritty! That sounds like my cue to leave, I think. <laughs> <laughs> go, go check out the other games. <laughs> gritty is Thanks for having me again. Language. Thanks for coming oh, back. You're welcome okay. anytime. Oh, wait. Everybody see Chris Man's pants. Aren't they a beautiful color? They're wait, so brilliant. Am I on the... Oh, you are on the camera there. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. Yes, hey model them pants. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Chris May. Good job, Team Australia. Oh, and G.I. Joel is in the chat as well, uh, asking what round is this? Good question. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, let's check. 25, says Crab Cat. Thank you. 
almost gratuity, says Aditya Iyengar. Wolfram says, I remember playing Kratzvi at the UK Open, wrong language. C'est vrai, monsieur, c'est français. Did he play D-O? There will be four rounds after this, that is correct. Uh, so still lots of coverage for the day yet to come. Oh, does he want to draw we we weasels? Weasels or wogzos, maybe. I'm not sure these setups are really... Uh, I mean, they're very creative and it's good that he's trying, but... Bleeding setups aren't really a winning chance. you for the next couple of matchups we're going to have on stream just in case you haven't had a chance to look. In the next round after this matchup we're going to have Olatunde Oduwole from Team Nigeria taking on Chalapath Ithiari from Thailand. And then in the round after that it'll be Vanita Balasingham taking on Teresa Brusson. That will be a battle of Malaysia and the rest of the world. And then the last two games of the day, we're going to see Dave Wiegand from Team USA playing. In the first of his two games, he's going to be playing Kanopon Zerjayakorn. And to finish up the day, probably our biggest matchup of the day, although there's been some really good ones all over the place, we will have David Wiegand taking on Ganesh Aservatam of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. so lots of great Scrabble coming up in the next four hours. Mm. One is, I think Eldar has a V, not a Y. I think he has G-A-R-T-T-V. Yeah, so that like. isn't a Y, you're correct. That is a V that is on David Eldar's rack. Let's see if we can get that updated in just a moment. Joel Sherman says, Australia is looking pretty strong in this event. Uh, yeah, they're doing pretty good now. They had a little bit of a rough patch early on, but they've recovered quite nicely and are looking to be quite a threat once again. Mm -hmm. Team Rest of the World has had a fantastic show as well. and It's uh, reflecting in the standings on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Chris Hawkins asks how many are in the bag. There is one. That's the unseen tile pool at the moment. So our uh, tech master Kumar, as I just mentioned, Ganesh has put up another huge score of over 500. So it's looking pretty good for him. <laughs> He's continuing to to pummel a lot of his p opposition in this tournament. Yeah, it's amazing that he could come back and continue doing what he did before he, he took that break. Mm -hmm. And ha a lot of credit has to be given as well. Is, uh, he realized back when, the last time I saw him was uh, in 2016 at the, uh, the Lille World Championship there, and he was part of the event staff there. He didn't play, but... Um, he was watching during the championship, and he played some uh, speed games with Wellington, Giger, mm. and some other people uh, after the event had concluded. And he mentioned just how much work he was going to need to put in, besides what he'd already had done, before mm. he considered himself ready to play against a field of that caliber again. So there's a lot of awareness he had as to you know, where his ability was, where it currently was at that time, and what he had to do to catch up to the, the field. And he's clearly done everything he had to do, because uh, he's putting in an amazing show. Elder has played one tile, the T. So he's uh, trying to stop the Z plays, so trying to remove the, the Zos and the Zas from the bottom. And mm. Right. Obviously, there are plays like Zia and Zas and such, but. The optimal endgame sequence there. Mm. And there goes, he was going to do Frigg and Skeef, but he has instead t 
He just played the blank. <laughs> he, he did, yeah. <laughs> so he originally had put it down without. I guess that's how you can play Vatu. I think he's left VIT, no? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. He's, of course, one regardless, but a little bit of time pressure there. That's at least two wins for Team Australia, and uh, as Chris may mention when he was briefly in studio, there was a game or two that uh, hadn't been officially decided yet, but it was looking good for them to pick up another point, so we'll see if we can get uh, something official from them in the room in a few minutes. I think uh, particularly uh, Ega has still got me scratching my head mm. a little bit if I were to point right. at one point in the game, um, yeah. especially after you've just dropped down the E to to clearly fish playing mm -hmm. lat, I just I don't understand playing uh, egg at all. I think egg is perfectly fine. It does keep one more vowel, which makes it a little bit less balanced. The egg was certainly um, a little bit more perfectly balanced as far as the leap goes, but not so much better that you have to drop the a, and especially with the inference. I think egg was fine. Yeah, yeah and especially given that. Neither of them seem 100% on skis. Yeah. What do you think, Jason? Would you have just gone with Ag, or did you have a different thought on that rack uh, in no, general? No, yeah, I agree that Ag would be what I would go for. Um, yeah, Support. I guess that in general there probably wasn't much that Austin yeah, maybe that was the turning point, because after that there was really nothing you could do. Yeah, sometimes it's just really the one move, right? Like, if you do egg, Ronnie yeah. still would have played, but I think the, the nature of the board changes a fair bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unclear if he would have had a bingo next turn, but it's possible. Yeah, At least would have had more counterplay. With Ronnie's on the top, if you play that in Skeef, uh, unlike uh, what happened here, is you, you're most likely going to score a fair bit in response uh, on top of Ronnie's in the next turn, and uh, the board just ends up developing very differently, I think, and scores are... yeah. But Oliver was well played on both sides. Yeah. 